probably the best part about resistant starches is the fact that you get to eat carbohydrates when you're on keto and they don't really have a negative impact. Resistant starches are starches that resist breakdown. They resist digestion. That's why they're called resistant starches. But it's not just like the glutton side of us that wants resistant starches. There is a huge benefit. And we have to remember that especially as we are bringing in a ketogenic diet into our lifestyle, we have a pretty radical shift of our gut microbiome. And it's not exactly for the positive. Like when we first started, we have a change in our microbiome that could definitely be perceived as negative. Like we have a reduction in gut diversity. However, after about six months, that restores as your body finds homeostasis. Your body's very good at adapting and, and figuring it out. But the bottom line here is that for that six month period of time, or any time really, we need to be finding ways to be able to support the microbiome. And just eating copious amounts of fiber, that's great, but that gets a little bit old. There's specific carbohydrates that are called resistant starches that you can eat that can have a tremendous impact on short chain fatty acids and a tremendous impact on your gut, but also indirectly help you form more ketones and help you deal with glucose better, help you oxidize fat better, because the gut microbiome and short chain fatty acids play a role. I'll explain. So resistant starches are resistant to enzymatic processes within the body. So that means when you consume them, they bypass, well, they don't bypass, but they go through the stomach and they don't really get broken down. We cannot absorb components from them. So what happens is they pass all the way through and then they get into the colon, they get into the large intestine and they start feeding the microbiome. The microbiome can break them down because there's bacteria from all different angles coming at it, breaking it down. So the material that we consume is resistant to our breakdown, but not for the microbiome. Now, what happens as a result is when the microbiome breaks them down, they create short chain fatty acids, one of which is called butyrate. Now there's a study that was published in the journal Nutrition Bulletin that demonstrated that the consumption of resistant starch did in fact lead to more butyrate, more short chain fatty acid production. So what does this actually do for us? Well, butyrate can inhibit nuclear factor kappa B. So what that means is at a master level, at the nuclear factor kappa B sort of like top level, we can modulate inflammation. This is great for you know how we feel, this is great for weight loss, this is great for a lot of things, but it can also kind of further along that process that occurs with ketosis, because ketones also inhibit nuclear factor kappa B. So we have sort of this potential inflammation modulating effect that comes to place with it. But I think the even cooler thing is that butyrate, when we consume resistant starches, butyrate acts as what is called a histone deacetylase inhibitor. Now, if you look at sort of the molecular like terminology, right, you have butyrate, but then you have ketones, which are beta hydroxy butyrate. See how close they are? They're only one hydroxy group off. So producing butyrate from digesting or not digesting resistant starches is actually helping us along the ketone pathway in some ways. So being a histone deacetylase inhibitor means that it is allowing our genes to be expressed. And what that means is, Genes that are normally under lock and key that cannot get accessed, get accessed when we have higher levels of butyrate. So there's a huge impact there, but let's get to the stuff that's really important. What about like insulin resistance and how do resistant starches actually help us with that? Well, what we have to remember is that short chain fatty acids that are produced as a result of the microbiome having food to eat, well, those help us out with glucose tolerance because different short chain fatty acids play a role as a signaling device to help us manage glucose better. They can help us utilize fats better. They improve fatty acid oxidation, but there's even some studies that demonstrate how they help with insulin resistance. So the journal Nutrition had published a study that took a look at obese individuals and they gave them RS2 starches. RS2 starches are starches that molecularly can't get broken down. Things like uh, green banana flour or green bananas, unripe bananas, uh, unripe plantains, cold potatoes. Those are RS2 starches. Okay, they found that when they gave subjects these, that it actually increased levels of what is called glucagon-like peptide 1. Glucagon-like peptide 1 has been demonstrated to really help with insulin resistance. So especially when you are getting into keto and you're maybe trying to kind of correct some of those issues, having a big spike of glucagon-like peptide 1 from resistant starches could definitely be a big important thing. 
Now, another big trigger for potential insulin resistance is metabolic tissue inflammation. Okay, if our metabolic tissue is not able to utilize glucose because it's inflamed, we can run into an insulin resistance issue. Well, one of the ways that glucagon-like peptide helps us out in this category is it slows down or can even stop the infiltration of macrophages, white blood cells into the tissues, meaning you're potentially modulating that inflammation at the metabolic tissue level. So long story short, it makes it so that your body is more receptive to insulin and a little bit less in the way of insulin resistance. Now, remember with resistant starches, you're not magically creating these short chain fatty acids. You still need a good wide abundance of gut bacteria. I do typically recommend that people use a good quality probiotic. It's not 100% required. I will give you the one that I recommend. I typically use one called Seed. They are a sponsor of this channel, full disclaimer. They have sponsored this video, but it's relevant because it's one that I use. So Seed is what is called a symbiotic. They have probiotics and prebiotics. So I would recommend if you are starting keto that you add that into the mix, or if you've been doing keto for a while, I recommend that you add it into the mix just so you can improve that kind of diversity of your gut since that's what we're after. If you are making the effort to add resistant starches into your diet, you might wanna be looking at the bacteria that you have in your gut as well. And we, we only know the tip of the iceberg with the microbiome. So we have to kind of lean into what we do know, which is that diversity is best. Right now, that's what the science shows is that a more diverse microbiome seems to be better. Is it the end all be all? We don't know, we're still learning. It's in its embryonic stages. But anyway, seed is down below. So it's got a capsule inside of a capsule, really interesting probiotic. And if you use the link down below, because they are a sponsor, you can save 15% off of them. So go ahead and use that link down below. And again, thank you to seed for sponsoring this content. And full disclaimer, I am not saying that seed probiotic is improving any of the markers that I'm talking about. That is not what I'm saying at all. I'm talking mainly about resistant starches and supporting that with a good diverse microbiome. Another interesting study that was published in the journal Gut Microbiota demonstrated that when butyrate was elevated, like when there were more short chain fatty acids, there was more brown fat activation. So if you're doing keto, it's something you definitely wanna be paying attention to. Brown fat is more metabolically active fat that allows us to dissipate energy as heat. Okay, there are more uncoupling proteins, which means that when electrons are passing through, it actually dissipates some of that as heat. So we're basically utilizing some of our calories that we're consuming and dissipating them as heat. So we wanna activate more brown fat. So a good, diverse, healthy microbiome with good amounts of short chain fatty acids and butyrate can help support more brown fat activation. So it's a very important thing. So then we kind of come down to, well, what kind of starches can we consume? Like what should we be consuming? It's a very specific kind of way that you go about it. You don't just eat a ton of this kind of stuff. One of the things you consume is cold oats, okay? So if you were to take gluten-free oats, cook them, then put them in the fridge and let them cool and consume about a quarter cup of that, you not only get a tremendous amount of resistant starch from a retrograded form, but you're also getting beta-glucans that are in oats as well. That's why they get kind of like jelly and kind of like gelatinous and weird. Those are beta-glucans. So that has a very powerful effect too when it comes down to the microbiome. Okay, so that's important cassava in small amounts. So if you are wanting to bread some chicken or bread some fish, use a little bit of cassava flour. It is a resistant starch that allows you to have a carbohydrate without it being super uh, effective in terms of spiking insulin. Then additionally, we wanna have things like tiger nut flour is another really good one. Uh, you can also have like a half of a partially ripe banana. Put it in your oatmeal. Believe it or not, they still taste halfway decent, but when you eat them, there's almost like a squeaky kind of feeling in your mouth. Like it kind of like, you'll see what I mean when you consume it. Okay, that's just because it's so rich and tightly packed in terms of the molecular structure. That explains exactly why it's hard to break down. Okay, all, same kind of thing with plantains. Same kind of thing, like partially unripe plantains have the same really positive effect when it comes down to being a resistant starch. Another one is gonna be cold beans. This sounds funny, but believe it or not, they're out there a lot. Like if you go to a deli, you'll see like cold lima bean salad or you'll see some cold black bean salads or black bean salsa, okay? Don't be afraid of five or six grams of carbohydrates or 10 grams of carbohydrates that come from black bean salsa. In the case of black bean salsa, you're getting cold black beans that are a powerful resistant starch that are actually going to help your microbiome. But you want to start small anyway because they're gonna give you a lot of gas. They're gonna make you feel really bloated if you have a bunch. So start small with a quarter cup anyway. 
Then the last one that I'll recommend that really isn't one you want to have all the time, but it's a small amount of cooled rice. So like sushi rice that's been like cooled, right? So you heat it and then cool it. I wouldn't recommend having more than like an eighth of a cup of that, but that's all you need. We're talking about a carbohydrate that's not really gonna do much with your insulin. In fact, if you were to measure your ketones after consuming these, you probably would not see a big decrease in your ketone levels. Again, we're talking small amounts, and it's all about the gut microbiome support more than anything else. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.